Hi, this is Joe from Create and Craft, and tonight I wanted to share with you some tips on how to make a really cool spinner card. Now, a spinner card is great anytime you want to add some movement to a card where something is rolling, say rolling down a hill like a snowball or a basketball or a beach ball, or in this case, a bowling ball. So I made this card using three different stamps from Viva Las Vegas Stamps, the bowler, the bowling ball itself and the pins. And what's really cool is when you slide the card, the bowling ball rolls down into the pins. And I thought this might be a neat card, say, for congratulations, to tell someone on the inside, hey, you scored a strike, or encouragement. Remember, in bowling, you always get two tries. So here's a really little neat example of how to use a spinner card. Let me show you some behind-the-scenes tips. So I started by taking the three Viva Las Vegas stamps and stamping out my images and fussy cutting them. Now a little tip, if you look on the back of our stamps, we always write where they're from. So in this case VLV is Viva Las Vegas. That's extra handy if someone asks you, hey, where did you get those stamps? And you're at, you want to look them up or maybe you're submitting to a magazine. If we mount them on foam, we'll write it on the back of the foam. So I stamp these and then fussy cut them out. In the bowling ball's case, I did emboss it. And the same with the bowling pins. Now, I couldn't figure out exactly how to get the red embossing powder to stick, and then realized I could just use a Versa marker watermark pen. So I went ahead and used the watermark pen here, and then put an opaque embossing powder, and that gave it that nice red gleam. I would say make extra pins, just in case you goof up, and then if you have any extra when you're done with your project, it makes a great little embellishment for the outside of the stamp or the envelope gives somebody kind of an idea of what to expect inside. So when you have the bowler and the pins and the bowling ball done, you're ready to begin. I started by making a background and I added some perspective to really help get that feeling that the ball was rolling at you. This PDF is available on our blog and you can download it. Just search on the blog for Bowling Alley and you should be able to find it. So print that out a couple times and then cut it out. Cut two exactly the same you'll end up with this. One is going to be the background and one is going to be the top piece. Now on that top piece you want to cut a slit about a quarter inch wide and in this case about six inches long. The key here is to make sure that the slit is big enough to fit a round pop dot and it has to be round. So I went ahead and made a little template here. You'll see that's where the slit's going to go. The ball's going to spin downhill and I marked it on the back. So I'm just going to quickly use my craft knife to cut this out. And if you're worried about keeping that line nice and straight, you can go ahead and use a ruler. I'm going to do this kind of quickly just so you can get an idea. And I'll go ahead and round off the corner here. Sometimes when you work with a craft knife, it's easier to turn the paper than it is to turn the knife. So we'll go ahead and just zoom right around that little piece. And this should pop right out. Looks like I missed a little piece right there. So now we have a slit. And you can see how this piece will go on top of this piece. And you'll still see that bowling alley from behind. Next thing we want to do is make our spinner work. So I've got my bowling ball. And you want to take two pennies. Make sure they're good and clean so that your pop dot will stick well. I'm going to just use an alcohol pad and give each one a quick little wipe. And that way I'm sure my adhesive will stick really well. That'll dry really, really quickly since it's alcohol based. Can't hurt if you blow on it a little bit. Now you're going to be sure that you have a round pop dot. A square pop dot won't work for this. So I've got some round pop dots here. I'm going to go ahead and take one out. And we're going to put it on one penny. Try to get it in the center as best as you can. And then you're going to go ahead and put that behind your slot and put on the other penny. That's really the secret to the whole mechanism. You can see here how that penny just slides back and forth in the slit. And now we're ready to build our card. So in this case my card is 9 inches wide by 4 inches tall. That's just the right size for a legal envelope. So I have a piece of paper 9 by 8. I scored it down the center. I'm going to fold it in half. Use a bone folder to give you a nice sharp crease. Then I'm going to put on some background paper. In this case I have a 
kind of a silver pattern that reminded me of 1950s. So I'm going to put that up here at the top of my card. Then go ahead and attach my background piece. Right down here at the bottom. And now I'm ready to go ahead and put the front piece on. Now you can't put this flat because you can see there's no way for the penny to spin. So we're going to want to pop this up. Now in the card I made I just showed you, I actually used a heavy piece of foam core. And I cut that out the exact shape of this front. And then so there was a groove in order for the penny to slide. I cut a groove, oh, about three quarter inches wide right out of this foam core and that gave my penny a nice opening to travel. Um, I did that because I knew the card would be handled a lot if we take it to classes and stuff. But if you're just sending this to someone, you don't have to be quite so intense about it. You can just use some regular pop dots. I'll use black ones here so you can see them a bit. Make sure though, you don't put any pop dots that'll get in the way of that penny spinning. You want to keep sort of a safe or protected area there. So I'll go ahead and just put some of these and you can see I'm using that little template just to make sure that I stay at least three quarters of an inch away from that penny, all the way around that original slot. <clears throat> so we're going to put those on. Now we're good to go. The penny should still travel. You can see it doesn't hit any of the pop dots. Go ahead and take all these off. That's always the hardest part of the pop using pop dots to me is actually taking the things off. Sometimes if you worry the edge a little bit, kind of go at it with your fingernail, they'll come off. Make sure they're good and attached to the base, and that'll help too. So there we go. Now we're going to just lay this on top of the original card. And there you have it. Now you have the base of your card, and that penny slides just fine. Kind of rolls right down that hill. You can go ahead and then add your embellishments. In my case, I used a glue dot to put the bowling ball on top and then stack the pins over here of course in the right order made a little sentiment and I ended up with this card I called it Fiesta Lanes that used to be the bowling alley near where I live so I hope you can find lots of uses for a spinner card a snowball rolling down the hill a basketball a beach ball or in this case a bowling ball makes a really nice masculine card fun and quick to do happy stamping